Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Andrew Wells and I'm a photographer here in the UK and today we're going to be looking at the HDR feature within Lightroom. So we're going to be able to create a HDR image within Lightroom without actually exporting at all and hopefully using the full dynamic range of the photos we've taken. So uh, let's quickly jump into Lightroom. Uh, here we have a church which is taken on the hillside um, and basically HDR for those who aren't really familiar with it it's um, it's where you take a series of images at different exposures and then we use software to combine them all together and so we will use the sort of brighter areas from the dark images uh, for the shadows and the highlights from you know vice versa so we're, we're going to try and create an image that's um, more like what we've seen so we're not going to go for the really sort of um, high HDR stuff which people like to play around with. We're really talking about photorealistic here. So uh, we've got three photographs here. We've got uh, the sort of normal, uh, an image that's two stops underexposed and then we've got a two stop overexposed image. Now uh, in this one you can see we've got a lot more uh, detail in the shadows um, but if we look at the normal image we've lost a lot of detail here in the sky however in the two stops underexposed we've got all that detail there in the sky so uh, we want to try and capture that all together so what we're going to do is simply select the three images so I'm going to select the first one hold down shift and select the last one and then uh, I'm going to right click on here and we're going to go up to photo merge and then HDR so or control H command H on a Mac. So uh, this is going to create our HDR preview for us. So we've got uh, a few things over here on this side. Um, first of all we've got auto align so um, I'm actually going to switch that on. Um, so it's going to generate a different preview now. And The reason I'm switching on is because these photographs are actually taken handheld. I had no tripod, I want to just see how this copes with it. Um, so handheld, uh, three shots fired very very quickly um, and I set the uh, auto bracketing within the, uh, the Canon camera I had. So it fired uh, three shots almost simultaneously, uh, just different uh, exposures and aperture priority. So uh, we didn't change the uh, depth field, we just changed the shutter speed. Um, so we'll have a look at autotone in a moment. Um, so there we go, that's the image it's created now with the autotone on. Now we can turn the autotone off um, and then do that toning ourselves. Um, but I'm going to leave it on there for now just so we can uh, see the effect it's having. Um, and again we've got the option to show any deghosting. There, there really shouldn't be that much in here. Um, and then we can actually tell it sort of, you know, um, a, a bit of deghost, no lots medium uh, and that's really when you've got movement happening a lot of movement I don't anticipate a lot of movement I just want it to auto align um, the church really um, I'm not too worried about clouds moving that sort of thing trees moving there or anything like that so uh, but if we had people moving around here we might want to look at that okay so um, I think I'm happy with everything there. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and merge those. I say you don't have to do the auto tone. You can do the auto tone here if you want, or you just play around the settings yourself. Um, I just find it it's a good place to to start. Really, it's a, a good point to um, start editing from. But we're going to play around with all that in a second anyway. As you can see, it's just creating the HDR. Uh, it takes me a little while longer because I got my recording software going. Um, but you can see uh, the progress there and what it should do is create another image for us. Now the advantage we've got here is we're not going to generate a, a TIFF file or anything like that. Um, we're actually going to generate a um, DNG file. Okay, so you can see here the name now is HDR DNG. So this essentially is a digital negative file of Adobe's or in other words it's a raw file so we we've used raw files initially and we've now got a raw file now you can see the settings it's it's put in there um, but essentially this this allows us um, to use the full detail of all the three images um, without losing the quality so we can really boost the shadows play around with the highlights um, and we're not using losing that quality at all um, so let's just have a look at the blacks, see if we've got any blacks now. And all, all I'm doing is holding down the Alt key and moving this slider. So we'll make sure we've got some uh, blacks in the image. And the same with the whites, uh, we've got a little bit up there, so that's absolutely fine. Um, highlights are down, we might add a little bit of contrast. We could boost the exposure a little bit. Um, 
so that's absolutely fine uh, add a little bit of clarity in there in the mid-tones um, but what I'm actually going to do um, this image really um, I want to make black and white so that was my intention of this all the time so let's hit black and white play around the slides so we're gonna have blue in the sky so let's take that down and create the darkness in the blue not too much don't want to lose uh, too much detail in there um, the greens as well we'll have greens on the grass so uh, let's darken those a little bit and then there should be some yellows in there as well we can boost that um, and then we can just play around with the settings again so actually we could probably take the exposure down a little bit again and create a much more moodier image but anyway you get the idea so uh, that allows us to play around with it a little bit but as you saw there very quickly created a HDR image um, for the environment now the great thing about this is let's just have a look at this photo here so this is an interior shot um, of a bedroom so uh, this shot here we got some of the detail outside um, we've lost a little bit of it but we've got the detail there these cushions are a little bit dark but obviously you know lamps and that sort of thing are okay if we go a bit brighter which is probably really what we want to do the overall brightness of this um, kind of goes way too bright here over on the windows and if we go darker again um, it just goes it's, it's nicely for the outside stuff um, but yes yeah, way too dark inside but again the lights look quite good on the wall we haven't really overexposed those so these three images I've got here we're going to do exactly the same thing again these are actually only one stop difference so not two stop difference like the other one so I'm doing the same here I'm going to go to uh, photo merge HDR Control H on the PC, Command H on the Mac, and it's going to do exactly the same as you want to do. And I don't need to auto align this one, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, and I'm not going to worry about deghosting either, because essentially this was taken on a tripod, so we did not move whatsoever. And then we're just going to merge it together, and let's see what the result comes back with. So it should be a little bit quicker on this one, hopefully. Now. I say I only did this with one stop apart because I kind of took the photo with HDR in mind and all I really wanted to do with this interior was just boost those shadows a little bit pull out a little bit a little bit of detail here and there so let's click on that now and there we go so there's the finished image there so even if we compare the one that the exposure was very very similar um, you could just see the difference in the cushions there the detail around here is so much nicer same with the windows um, and we just get a nice lighting going all the way around with the room so um, and again you can see some detail down in the chair there and this this original image we did over there there was just no detail in it at all so yeah a much much better result and all it took was just uh, firing three images rather than uh, one uh, and allowed us very quickly to do that in Lightroom so in terms of work process very easy for interiors just being able to just boost that light a little bit boost the shadows without really losing the quality and that's pretty much um, settings in there but again we'll do the same thing we did before we'll just check we got some blacks in there and also got some whites in there because that's quite important to an image to make sure your histograms going right across the board just makes your image pop a little bit we could add a little bit of clarity to the midtones um, otherwise I'm quite happy with that so um, yeah uh, I think that's a, a good image to go so hopefully you've uh, enjoyed that um, do leave me a comment below let me know is this a feature you're going to use in Lightroom do you prefer a, another program for doing your HDR like Photomatics or are you going to stick to something like uh, Photoshop and carry on doing HDR in there I think this has got its place for a quick HDR um, if you're going to be more um, artistic um, then perhaps this isn't quite the best thing it did an okay job but I'm that some of the edges are a little bit iffy if you ask me particularly over here um, it's not done the uh, the most perfect of job I don't think of uh, of that section there so yeah you know food for thought but let me know in the comments what you think and your suggestions and also if you've got any questions leave me a comment leave me a like if you've enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe for more videos on photography tips tricks and tutorials my name is Andrew Wells thanks for watching and join me next time bye for now